Three, two, one. Daybreaks and aches. I'll be running when my feet hit the ground. Welcome to From One Mom to Another with Cindy Anderson. I subscribe to the belief that women need women. As a mother of seven, she is versed in all aspects of the triumphs, joys, and challenges of parenting. Tap into your own strengths and trust that you are the best mother your children ever had. And give yourself some credit. Take some time to breathe. You are doing better than you think. Now here's Cindy. You are all doing better than you think. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of From One Mom to Another. Today, Stephanie and I are going to talk about the power of chores. Not the chores that we do, but the chores or the jobs that we ask our children to do. It seems like this is the fight of every mother. Myself, I think I've done every chore chart, heard every argument from my children, why they should not have to work around the house. But I feel like the value of learning to work and contribute overrides their complaints. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about those challenges and ways to help them learn to take pride in a job well done. Yeah, I definitely remember chores being a huge component of our um, childhood and life growing up in the Anderson household. We learned really, really early on to get up as early as we possibly could on Saturday mornings to cram in as much cartoon watching as we could. (laughs) Because by 10 a.m., right after X-Men ended, you and dad would turn off the TV. Our chances for breakfast were over. (laughs) And you guys brought out the dreaded chore list. And I feel like you guys were upstairs spending, you know, all hours of the early morning coming up with all kinds of means of cruel and unusual punishment in the form of mopping and, and toilet scrubbing. And yes, with relish, relish and a gleam in your eyes would unfold the the chore scroll and let it unravel to the floor, you know? That's right. Yes, I got accused of that, um, you know, by you and by every other child. And and the answer to that was, yes, we stayed up all night and we devised ways to torture our children every Saturday. That's right. (laughs) I knew it. I knew it. Full Full confession. That is exactly what we did. You know, but we did what we, we did, um, Saturday chores were always, you know, the days to kind of catch up the house, right. Work together as a family doing that. Right. And maybe, okay. Maybe this is turning into a therapy session for me. Um, because I would <laughs> like to also say on top of Saturday chores, we also had individual chores throughout the week that we were in charge of. That's right. In addition to like our rooms and whatnot. But I would like to, I would just like to ask the question that now that you're a mother, do you see the genius of my ways? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) And do you, and do you stay up at night devising uh, chores for your children? My husband and I have spreadsheets and we have (laughs) monthly rotations for our children's chores and it's a whole big process and my kids see the dreaded you know, clipboard right. and come out right. on Saturday mornings and throughout the week. And, and, yes. they, and they run in fear. And, and I think that chores, and I think this is really important to, to remember as parents, is that chores is one of those long game things. You know, I, I say that a lot, that motherhood is a long game, and chores are certainly one of those. There, there really aren't that many children that wake up on a Saturday or get up in the morning you know, try to make sure that they get up early enough to get all their chores done because they just love to get do chores. They right. don't see the genius or the reasons for those chores. Right. And, um, but when they have children of their own, all of those reasons and um, a lot of their life skills that they have that have come from chores also um, help them see the genius of, 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 of teaching our children how to work. So, and, and but, as a testament to that, I now appreciate mulching mulching was the worst (laughs) that came around every spring do you remember that when the when the truck we we out i love flowers i love landscaping and every summer we would have like what 12 yards of mulch i mean it wasn't that but it was it was a lot of mulch maybe three to six yards of mulch delivered and and you would hear that 
ding, 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 as the truck was backing up in the driveway to drop it off. And it was like, it was like all of my like spring break plans were like just, you know, bright sure. and shiny and felt exciting. And like right. with every like dump of that mulch truck, <laughs> deeper and deeper, deeper underneath mulch. Yeah, I think we called it Mount Mulch or something like that. Like, <laughs> like the, the boys gave it a name. I don't Mount know. Mount Doom. <laughs> that was probably that was probably it. And every spring break we did we did spring cleaning, which I still to this day stand by that. Well, they were like, there's spring cleaning, and then there's Cindy Anderson spring cleaning. And Cindy okay. Anderson spring cleaning involves toothpicks and Q tips. Mm -hmm. And knives with like washcloths fit like right. wrapped around right. the top of the knife so that you can scrub. And okay, so funny little story. <laughs> so, so my husband and I have recently moved, and we have a new house, and we're trying to get everything all nice and clean. And um, it's it's not a new house, and so you know you you move into other people's yeah, just stuff stuff. So we cleaned out the the refrigerator. <laughs> Dad was. My husband was was doing something and pulling out the, he pulled out the vegetable drawers, and you know the scene between the glass and the, the yes. casing. Yes. He turned to me and he goes, "Is this where I pull out a toothpick?" Yes, <laughs> because otherwise that's like no man's land. It's no man's land. But yet Cindy Anderson figured out how to how to clean. I figured it. out how to clean it. That's right. She, you made us do it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're welcome. You're welcome to all my children. Um, I, you're welcome. Um, so I think what we're going to try do is um, we're going to, let's take this kind of in, in portions. And first let's talk about some of the challenges of getting our kids to do chores and some real takeaways on how to uh, be successful in that venture. Okay. So let's just dive right in. Um, the, our kids have certain reasons and excuses why uh, chores will not fit into their schedule. I mean, I think that's, you know, the greatest challenges we face. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, so when we're, when we're talking about challenges, let's kind of discuss some of those. The, the first one is um, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, God. My kids can sit for hours in front of the screen and not move right. right they they channel this bladder control of an, of an olympic right. god right right and then the mo the <laughs> moment they see me enter the room with that chore list right it's all of a sudden they're like seconds away from a major you know accident that, 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 that's right and they feel like it's it's an unarguable um reason because you have right. to let them go to the bathroom and you right. can't that's not a bluff you want to call like that is not right. a bluff that you want to risk right right so that that's one of them and then the, the the other one that i like is i don't know how to do this and and that translation is i'm going to mess this up so badly that my mom will never ask me to do it again <laughs> <laughs> that isn't truth and i don't know what it is what it is because th that's such a classic kid move where they'll try to make it so painful for you to have to right. watch them do it the wrong way. It's a battle right. of wills. It just, that's, that's what it comes down to. It, it is a battle of wills. And, and, the, and the challenge becomes then, how do we work on that tight rope? Tight, what's the word I want? Tight? Tight rope. Tight rope, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, because we don't want to get into a battle of wills. That's not... Right, that's it's not, not good. Productive. Nor do we want to let let them off the hook, and so uh, uh, my son, my son William. Now I'm uh, he. He tells a story on himself, so I'm gonna tell it. I can I can tell it here. But so like, if I would ask him to do it, this was his favorite thing. Pretend like he didn't know how to do it, mm -hmm. or just mess it up so badly that I would just clean it up myself. And I think as we go through these challenges, that the takeaway is. We have to be stronger than the challenge in that. If I said to William, it, you know, it's your turn to washing the dishes. Well, that pot is just so messed up. I have to let it soak. I don't know, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to get it all off. Right. 
I just kept turning, sending them back and saying, use that scrubber, do this, do that, um, until the job got done. And I, I think, you know, patience has to, has to come in to this as well. You, you have to really develop this deep grit to survive. And we're going to talk about this later, but one of the, the way to be able to meet the challenges of helping our children learn how to work is a belief in what we're doing as well. Yeah. We, we have to believe that, that the outcome, like I talked talk about before, is, is going to be worth the sending them back in six, seven, eight times yeah because you do then think to yourself oh my goodness this is would just be so much easier to do it myself right and it is easier and it probably would get done better and all of that is true Mm -hmm. um but uh we you know they don't they don't learn that way and they don't get the benefits of learning how to work that way and um you know when when the kids said that they would always say that this was a way that we would torture our children. The torture is on the mothers trying to get the children. Oh, absolutely. They didn't understand that, you know, (laughs) that this process. um, I promise you. Yeah. I promise you kid that watching you Windex a mirror for two hours (laughs) is more painful for me. That's right. Than it is for you. I I promise. promise. Yeah. That, that is true. Um, and this is one of my favorites, too. I always have the most chores. Oh, now, when kids say. Yes, when yeah. kids say, why do I always have all of the chores? And, um, th- and then they always point out, you know, everything that they have to do versus their siblings. Um, one time, I, I can't remember which child it was, compared themselves to the baby, which was Michael. Why doesn't Michael have to do any chores? Right. Uh, you know, he's nine months old, so you oh. know <laughs> his list is going to be so much shorter than than yours. You know, I started my kids off extremely young with the idea that they were going to clean up after themselves. I felt like if at you know a year and a half or so they had the the motor coordination to dump out toys, then they had the motor coordination to put the toys back in, and we would make games out of it. You know, we would try to throw the toys in the basket. We would count while we were putting the toys back in the basket. It, it didn't have to be a draconian, strict, right, dreary time. It was actually a lot of fun. Well, and, and, and to that point, I, I think that we can't not have our kids do anything until all of a sudden they're eight, nine, 10, and we think, okay, now they're old enough for chores. Right. And this, this idea of chores has sprung on them and, and, you know, we expect them to know how to work and be perfect, you know, be good at it and do the jobs the right way that we need to start at the beginning. And I think the, the first thing that um, take away from this is that we as mothers need to can understand and that we can start young and use age appropriate chores. Right. One one way I approached chores was I pick the chore that I hate the most, and it is unloading the dishwasher. I would rather clean bathrooms and mop floors all day long than unload <laughs> the dishwasher. The dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> so I made sure that the kids had plastic dishes, and I kept one of the lower cupboards reserved for those kid plastic dishes. Mm-hmm. So my kids at about three, four, five would, they would come get all the kid plastic dishes, put them away in their cupboard. And that was about a third of the dishwasher. Yes. Depending on, you know, how many kids I had at the time. And, you know, as they got a little older then they could do the silverware and a little older, they would put all the dishes away and then, you know, kind of just kind of grew from there. But, and I always really liked that. I thought we said that was such a good idea. They, they didn't even really know that they were doing quote chores. They, they weren't old enough yet to have a formal, I mean, chore list like you would an older child. But they, you know, you would say, okay, get the kid dishes or unload the kid dishes. And they would just go run over and they would do that. And they had their little lower cupboard. And I always thought that was such a great way to start them out. Yeah. Um, you know, contributing to the family. 
Yeah. You know, and the, the other one that we have had a pretty good success with starting young is laundry. Mm-hmm. You know, my kids at a young age loved, you know, sticking half their body into the dryer, right. a big armfuls, putting it on the couch, you know, just mm-hmm. something to kind of show them that there's work to be done and that they're needed and mm-hmm. helpful. And contribute to a family and get that idea instilled in them young that, that we all work. And that brings me to my, to the next takeaway is that, you know, as a family, um, there are things that have to be done in keeping our home and keeping ourselves um, clean. And uh, we need to uh, work with them. I mean, it's um, one thing that they, sometimes they have chores, they get up and make their beds and straighten up and clean up after themselves and those things. But I just feel like you know, we will never teach our children how to work if they don't see us working with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think one of the reasons is that if I clean something a certain way and you kids see me clean it that way, mm-hmm. and then I ask you to clean it, I keep to the same standard. I'm not asking you to do more or less than I'm doing. Yeah. And, you know, that's just something that I've kind of struggled with going, you know, working and going back to school and that my time for chores has significantly shrunk. And so the kids do a lot more individualized chores and, and they're older that, you know, my three girls are older and they, they're fine. I can give them their list and they, mm-hmm. but I've got these two boys that are kind of my cabooses that are that middle age where they're still learning how to do chores and I really have to remind myself that I'm kind of starting over with them a little bit. Right. I've got to find some time to either work with them or yeah, see me working while we're all do- doing chores because that disconnect is there. It's hard to get around for, for a kid. That, that is challenging. And for those mothers that, that, that do work, um, that, is, that is kind of a challenge to do, to, to accomplish. What, one way too, like we talked about the spring cleaning, um, you know, when you do family projects, the spring cleaning, clean out the garage, mount mulch. I mean, dad and I were out working right. with you. Right. And so, and so that's an opportunity for them to see you work, um, not maybe in the individual chore category, but certainly a, as a family project, they see you working and they see you giving as much as you're um, asking them, them to do. And, and I think that that makes, makes a big difference as well. Yeah. You know, sometimes, so the, the threat was, um, you know, if you, if you're, if you can't clean your room yourself, I'll come help you. (laughs) Because (laughs) because then it gets mom cleaned. Because then it gets mom cleaned. Yes. Um, uh, however, um, it's a great way to show them how to clean their room. I mean, kids, kids just don't know how to do it. They, they get, they get frustrated and they don't know uh, because they, they need to be shown clearly what the steps are. Right. And, um, that usually ahead. a big chore can be broken down into smaller pieces. And right, right. Yeah. First we do this and first we do that. And I just always left because uh, Michael hated to clean his room. It was like, it was like your dishwasher. Like he, it just, did not like to clean it. And I think it overwhelmed him then when he did it. And so I'd say, Michael, you've got 20 minutes to do this on your own or I'm coming up to help you. We, we all and have our Mount Everest to climb. That's right. That's right. And so I would go up and I would help him and we would take it in segments. And I think one of the ways that we can help them uh, with working with them is help them to see the end product. Something right. that was so overwhelming uh, and then when we get the room done, I would say to him, you know, we don't assume that our kids are going to to understand the principles or learn the lessons on their own. So we, I would say to him, okay, now look at your room and look how nice and neat it is. You know where everything is and, you know, have a celebration and let them enjoy that feeling of clean and organization right. um, that comes with that. And I think, you know, again, you know, we, we are, we have to be such a big part of that process of teaching them the value of of work and the reward of work. Do you feel like formal chore charts were effective versus the, 
here's a list, let's tackle this. You know, like a more yeah. fluid, flexible list. So here's, here's my thoughts on chore charts. I've done every chore chart known to man or beast. <laughs> I, I, when you were young, I would draw pictures of the chores because before you could read. I remember a poster board where you drew a ship on the water mm -hmm. and the title on the board said, all hands on deck or your mother will sink. And I remember yeah, and I, your, you drew hands up yeah. out of the water. Yes. All hands on deck or mom will sink. That is, that was my motto. And um, I've just used every, everything known to man. And then I have, at one point I took cute clip art and drew uh, for each room and had laminated steps of everything you do to clean a bathroom, everything right. you do to clean a bedroom, a kitchen, because there's a difference between doing dishes and cleaning the kitchen. Right. Right. And my kids, when I'd say it's your time for kitchen duty, once the dishes were done, they, they were, they hightailed it out of there. So detailed list of everything to do. I would just like to say that everything works for three months. <laughs> that is a fact. Yes. And finally, when you guys were teenagers and you weren't, I've like the steps are right in front of your face. It's it. I've taped it to the door. <laughs> I just thought I'm done. And I just said to you, said to you guys, I said, look, these are your chores. Please do them. And that was my chore chart. And that was the end of chore charts. But I don't, I'm not a negative chore chart person. They all work but not one is going to work for the whole entirety of your children's childhood. Right. You're going to have to constantly mix that up. And then yeah. if you get old enough, you can just say, these are your chores. Yeah. We, I feel like we have tried tons of things. And I feel like now that my kids are older, we can kind of do a more fluid, flexible, you know, things change up a little bit, you know, every day. But, um, you know, right. I, I, right. I was like, Chore charts are just full of good intentions. Yes, just full of them. And yeah, they're they're tough, and 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 the disappointment that you feel when they don't work. When that chore chart has been collecting dust. Yes, when they no longer care about the gold star, when they would just really rather not earn one. Right. And then then that's hard, and so. Um, you know, that's my answer about the, that's my answer about the chore charts. But I, I also think too, that um, like when we did the spring cleaning now, um, it, it's going to be taught. My great, 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 great grandchildren are going to be told stories about our, the spring cleaning weeks. And I'm sure each generation, it's going to get even worse. Like the stories are going to be. We were. However, I believe in paying my workers now. I don't pay my children money because they're part of the house and they contribute to the family. And this is what we all do. Um, but we, with, with the work came fun. So at the end of our work day, we would order pizza or we would go yeah. to the movies or yeah. do something fun. Yeah. And I think because you have to have the fun to kind of balance out the work. I am just one of those strange people that like to work anyway. And I think there's a camaraderie when you work as a group. And I don't know with the kids if they're just, if they pull together in their misery or, or I think what. there's a camaraderie born of the boredom and the misery, definitely. You know, as you're pushing the vacuum back and forth and you're grumpy about it and you look at your sibling who's dusting mm -hmm. and then you think it would be really fun to take the vacuum and try to hit their feet with a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> and then they look up and they see you charging at them in the vacuum and they start spraying you with Windex to get you away. Okay. Then, right. you know, yeah. The chore battles are born and it that's, was, it was a ton of fun. That, that, of fun. That's camaraderie. Not really the kind I was talking about. No, I just think that when you work together and then you can, and then you end it with a fun thing that, that you get a, a sense of it, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of teamwork Sure. that comes comes from those those kinds of things um because our goal is really uh well our goal is to keep our home running for sure 
but the higher goal is to keep instilling our kids a love of working and that love of working is what's going to follow them into adulthood. I, I think you brought up a really good point when you said that eventually those gold stars stop working and it's no longer worth it to our kids to work. Right. And, um, you know, I think we, I think our responsibility then is to help our children develop a love for work, to find a deeper motivation for why we contribute to the house, why we clean up after ourselves. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, um, that, if we understand what that motivation is and what the long-term effects are of our children working, it will see us through those challenges. And I think, you know, there, there's a a number of years ago, there was a woman named Daryl Hull who wrote a series of, of uh, books about uh, homemaking and motherhood. And she used to always say that if kids were responsible for their bedroom and one other room in the house, they could rule the world. And her point was, and I latched onto this and totally agreed that their point is that if our children um, can have the responsibility and the discipline and the drive to do what it takes to keep a room clean and one other house, that they have learned the skills that they will need to rule their world, to be successful adults and to uh, be able to participate in the workplace and in their own homes and in their own families. And so I I think that's our motivation. Not only do they contribute to the family, but they learn that they can do hard things. Right. Right. That they can be part of a team, you know, and, and be a team player. Um, Well, and that their, their actions then have consequences for other people. You know, if they do their stuff laying around, um, I feel like our kitchen counters are always, full of stuff and then you know mm-hmm. I have to come in and it's my turn to make dinner and I then have to clean up the mess before I can make dinner and it makes dinner late for everybody and you know right so make connections that if they leave a mess that that actually impacts other people right and you may not think that what you're doing is impactful you may just when they leave the home you just may not uh, know what they've learned or not but one of their first phone calls home is going to be a complaint about the roommate who doesn't clean the toilet. Right. Who doesn't clean up after themselves. Right. Who and leaves things laying to. around. And, right. Yes. And doesn't know to. And, um, and that's when you'll know that you instilled the, you know, that they got it. They got the message and they understood it. And it will translate, like I said, I think they're better students. If they know how to work, I think they're more resilient if they know how that they can do hard things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, I, I think that those motivations um, will get us through all the chore charts that we do for sure and continue to continue going. I just for kicks and giggles asked my kids um, what, what chores taught them and how it applies in their lives. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember what you said? No. <laughs> do you want me to read it to you? Shall yeah. I read to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I swear I read your book, but I don't remember. Yeah. Did you read my book? <laughs> um, <laughs> you said, um, Stephanie talked about some of the hardest things she was asked to do and how she felt when they were done. You said, I learned and appreciated that you could trust me to do hard things. You knew you could count on me. Now, as a mother, myself, when life becomes hard, I remember that I, that I believed in, that you or me believed in her and her abilities. And this gives me the courage that I need to face my challenges. She said, I have done hard things before and I can do hard things now. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. <laughs> so, so brilliant. <laughs> and... You know, each of my kids had a story. Each of my kids had something that they learned. Even William with his, I'm going to do this job the worst way possible so that mother will just take it over, (laughs) said that he learned how to stick with something. Mm -hmm. And that when something was hard, like school or a, a challenge at work or in his family, he knew that, you know, to, to just keep at it and to, you know, get the help that he needed and, and to be successful. And so 
I feel like, um, you know, chores are something that's very easy to give up on. Um, but the consequences of, of allowing our children to learn how to work, starting at a very young age to grow into the idea that they contribute to a family, that there are consequences um, when, they, when they don't, and that they learn that they have the ability to do things that are overwhelming um, and hard, uh, really uh, benefit them um, immensely and add to their success in their adult life. That is all the time we have. Um, but if you want to read more about chores and children, head over to my website, onemomtoanother.com, and check out the article, The Power of Chores. Thanks again for listening. And like always, remember, you are doing better than you think. I need some heart.